welcome back to a to the ABG Investor Days. Uh, my name is Johan Brown, a retail analyst here at ABG, and I now have the pleasure to welcome Peter Åsberg, CEO of Midsona. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. I'm uh, presenting this from down uh, in south of Sweden in our headquarters down in Malmö, and I hope that all the technicalities will work out. It's special in the sense that I cannot see the audience in front of me, but uh, my assumption is that you are a mix of newcomers to the company and people who have followed the company for some time. So what I will try and do is to strike a balance between talking about the company, uh, giving a brief introduction to the company, but also to talk about our current trading and where we're heading. Midsona is about food and it's about healthy, natural, and primarily organic food. That's the core of our business. And I think we can skip not only one, but two pages and go to the introductory page. Yes, thank you so much. This is a brief description of Midsona. And as I said, we are a company uh, focusing on healthy, organic, and natural foods. Also importantly, we are a growth company, so we are very dedicated to growth. And as you can see on the right hand of, of this slide, we have had some good, good growth over the last number of years, uh, very strong growth year after year. And, and this is a mix of actually one, uh, driving our own brands in the portfolio, but also a very active M&A agenda. And we come from somewhere between eight and 900 million Swedish krona in sales in 2012 to 3.1 billion last year. And this year, if you look at the performa rate, we are trending at 3.5 to 3.6 billion Swedish krona. So we have created a lot of growth and thereby also a lot of shareholder value. I would like to go to the next picture, which describes uh, our, our working model. And, and this is quite a complicated slide, but it's important in order to understand the company, who we are, where we come from, and also where we're heading. And I would like to take you on a journey because this, I would say, all started in, in 2011, 2012. Uh, I joined the company already as CEO 2007 on a change mandate at that point in time. Uh, and the first year I spent restructuring the company uh, and at about 2011, 2012, we set out on a new strategic journey. And at that point in time, we had started to focus our business on healthy foods. We made some very important observations at that point in time about the, the Nordic market for health and well-being products. Number one, we saw that there was an increasing interest among consumers for healthy living, eating healthy, to exercise, uh, and this was one of the factors that, that we were motivated by. The second factor was that this market at that point in time was very fragmented. So there were few strong brands, few strong companies. The market mainly consisted of small and medium-sized family companies. And our hypothesis, but also our objective, was that there will be consolidation in the market, and we would like to be one of the consolidators in, in the Nordic market. The third thing uh, that we noticed was that the majority of the sales uh, for these type of products that we sold uh, went via the specialty stores, i.e. health food stores, uh, to some extent pharmacies. And it was our thought that if we should really make this big, we need to get it out to what we call the grocery trade, i.e. the big retailers across the Nordics, uh, the big change, in order to make it more relevant to more people. And this is pretty much the journey that we, we then worked on in, in the Nordic from 2012 up until 2017. One, to drive our own brands. Two, to identify and, and buy a lot of family companies and integrate them into our business and gradually having our products both in the specialty stores, but also in, in the grocery trade, the big retailers. 
And, and this was a very successful journey, as you saw on the previous page, which made us grow tremendously. Then, around 2017, we realized that there weren't that many obvious acquisition targets left in the Nordics. There still were a few, uh, and there still are a few, but not as many and not as evident as before. And we also had a good platform ourselves. We have strong brands, strong organizations in all the Nordic countries. So we started to look at mainland Europe, and what we saw then was, was quite exciting and quite interesting and quite motivating for us. Because the situation that we saw in the Nordics uh, back in 2012, uh, we then saw in the rest of Europe. I.e. markets that are fragmented, uh, consumers that are taking increasing interest in health and well-being, and uh, not, not the least, the majority of the sales went through the specialty stores. So this is our journey now to actually what we did in the Nordic from 2012 to 2017 in terms of consolidating a market. We are now going after Europe and we're taking the, we have taken the first steps already. We made one major acquisition in Germany in 2018, a company called Davert. And then we acquired a company in France and Spain called Alimentation Santé towards the end of last year. And both of those acquisitions have so far been, been very good. We have done the integration. Uh, both companies are running very well, so we're very happy about those first steps out into Europe. Let's go to the next page. As I'm sure you can imagine, the markets that we're in and the segments that we're in, healthy natural foods, are growth markets. And there are some strong underlying trends pretty much across uh, Western Europe, but also in the US. Uh, very favorable trends. People are more interested in these segments. And, and as you've probably seen, the interest in plant-based foods i.e. we want to eat less meat and more plant-based foods. It's a very strong trend across Europe, and we have a number of brands that answers up to that trend. Organic has seen a lot of growth, and our projection is that organic product will also grow in the future. Uh, that is Ekologiska Produkter in Swedish. Uh, the growth might be a little bit slower in the Nordics, but we also have the highest per cap consumption of organic products in the world. Uh, Denmark is the market where people eat most organic foods in the world. It's about 13 to 14 percent of the total food pie. And Sweden is trailing just behind on 11 to 12 percent. Uh, that is in quite sharp contrast to many of the big countries out in Europe. Uh, Germany, one of our core markets, uh, organic food is about 5 to 6 percent of, of the total food pie. And in France, it's about the same. So we see that there is tremendous growth opportunity in those markets, and those markets are also growing faster. Uh, we're also into sports nutrition, and that's also a market that has been showing some very healthy growth rates. Let's move to the next one. Thank you. This is what we call the Midsona way, i.e. our strategy. Uh, and it first starts with a vision. And that vision is to become one of the leaders in health and well-being in Europe. That's a position that we already have in the Nordics, but now we also want to take this position out in Europe. And we have four main strategies to achieve that. One, and most importantly, is to nurture and grow our own prioritized brands. And I will come back to which brands those are. I already talked about our acquisition again, and this is also something that we want to continue. We have done a lot of acquisitions in the past, and we will be acquisition-driven also in, in the future. As we are growing, uh, we have increasing opportunities to streamline our whole, whole value chain in terms of our production, in terms of our sourcing, i.e. buying of raw materials, in terms of our internal processes, thereby driving costs down. 
And this is also something that we have done successfully. Last but not least, we are very committed to sustainability and health. Uh, sustainability might be a buzzword for, for many companies nowadays, but for us, it's a big part of our overall idea. We need to be sustainable, uh, our brands need to be sustainable, because this is something that both our customers and consumers demand. And we want to create an external, uh, a healthy internal and external culture. We go to the next page. And now we are at a summary of our brand portfolio. And as you can see on the left-hand side of the slide, around 60% of our portfolio is organic brands. So that's the majority of the portfolio. About 20%, a little bit less actually, is conventional health food brands. And 20% is self-care products, i.e. dietary supplements, and natural remedies, uh, and, and so on. And on the right-hand side, you see our 10 prioritized brands. Uh, and depending on what country you are in, you will probably know some of the brands, and some of them might be unknown to you. But those are all iconic, strong brands in the respective markets. Ertekram is a leading organic brand in Denmark and Finland, Kumarkata in Sweden, Davert in in, in, in Germany. Uh, we have a brand called Helios in Norway. Uh, we have strong brands in France and Spain. Uh, we also have some very strong conventional brands. If you live in Sweden, I'm sure that you know about the Frigg's brands, which is our conventional health food brand, rice cakes, corn cakes, health teas, dietary supplements, a wide variety of, of health products. And those are the brands that we focus on, uh, and those are the brands that we've been growing at very healthy rates in the last few years. We move on. Thank you. When I look at Midsona, I think that we have three distinct competitive advantages, something that makes us a little bit special. The first one is our value chain within organic products. We have a good command of the whole value chain from the growers, through our production, out to the customers and consumers. Uh, and we can produce a wide variety of products in our, our own factories. And I think that this is very key for organic products because organic products, it's of course very important that you can guarantee that they're organic, that they are safe, uh, that they are really healthy. And actually in this page or slide, you see our employees out in the field together with the growers. You see our production facilities. And the fact that we have so many production facilities means that we can produce a lot of organic produce ourselves and also uh, what we call product swap, i.e. to produce uh, in one place but then to sell it under all our different organic brands across Europe. The second competitive edge, if we go to the next page, is our ability to build market-leading brands. Uh, we are market-leading when it comes to organic dry products in all the Nordic countries. We have Kumarkata in Sweden, Örtekram in Denmark and Finland, and Helios in Norway. So we have a track record of building brands, making them relevant both to consumers and customers, and that's also a key competitive edge of ours. The third competitive edge is our proven M&A model. I half jokingly, but there is a certain truth to it, I tend to say that I do spend a lot of time drinking coffee with owners of family companies. And there actually is a certain truth to this. Uh, what we're doing is that we are proactively seeking the companies that we're interested in. We establish a relation with them. Uh, we tell them about Midsona. Uh, we also very openly talk about their interest to, to acquire the company. And usually after the first meeting, 
Uh, you only get uh, nice getting to know you, but uh, we are not for sale. But then as time goes by, we keep the relation. At some point in time, there usually is a trigger uh, for selling the company. It might be a succession question. It might be the fact that they have taken the company to a certain level, but taking it to the next level is more, more difficult. And then uh, Midsona is uh, the obvious taker of that company because we have already a relation with the company. And this is a model that we have employed. You can see on the left-hand side of this slide that we've done quite a few acquisitions in, in, in last years. Uh, we also do participate in some bidding process, I should say. So we, we do both. And principally speaking, we're making two types of acquisitions, uh, what we call platform acquisitions. That's exactly what it sounds like when we establish a new platform. And that might be in a new geographical market, but it also might be in a new product segment. And when doing that, we need to buy a certain amount of critical mass. Uh, we cannot buy a company that is too small. We have to have a company with good customer relations, strong brands, strong processes, typically also their own production. Uh, and those companies are normally a little bit more expensive. So we buy those companies at somewhere around 10 to 12 times EBITDA usually. And as I said, we have done two, two major platform acquisitions in, in the last couple of years. Davert in Germany in 2018 and Alimentation Santé uh, with business in France and Spain in 2019. Then what we do is that we do what we call add-on acquisitions. That is to add on smaller companies to the platform. Uh, and the beauty of that is that those companies we can usually buy at lower multiples, so they are cheaper because they're not as advanced. Maybe they only have one product line, uh, not the same customer relations, uh, so we get them a little bit cheaper. Uh, what we do then is that we integrate them into our platforms and, and thereby, one, uh, getting synergies on the cost side, uh, and two, typically what we also get is synergies on the sales side in the sense uh, that the platform usually has better customer relations, a better distribution muscle, so a better ability to actually bring the product and the brands to the customers and consumers. Uh, so those acquisitions are typically very value adding. Uh, we did our first add-on acquisition in Germany last year, and we hope to follow up with add-on acquisitions in all our three ge geographical divisions, the Dodic division, the North Division, which is basically the Dach region, and the South Division with France and Spain. So this is key for us. And if we move to the next page, we can see a summary of, uh, of uh, our acquisition, acquisition agenda. In 2017, we made a major analysis together with a consulting firm to, to look at the European market. And we actually found 1,000 potential acquisition targets in the market, which is a lot, of course. This list might be theoretical. Uh, some companies might be too small, but it clearly shows uh, what I was discussing earlier, that this uh, market for health and well-being is very fragmented. Uh, only in Germany we found over 300 companies, and we think that this will look different in the future. So we want to be a consolidator in this market to buy a lot of medium-sized and small family companies to integrate them into our platforms and thereby to build a leading position in Europe. We have taken the first steps and more steps are to come. Let's go to the next page. I've already talked about that to some extent, but I made, the last major acquisition that we made was Alimentation Santé, uh, and we we took over in October 2019, so this is relatively new. Uh, we are very happy with the development so far. It has been going really, really well. We've been able to increase sales and profits, uh, but also to uh, expand the product from Alimentation Santé into other markets. And one of the most important things is that Alimentation Santé has uh, production capability and competence in plant-based meat alternatives, which is something that is 
really, really hot right now and something that we want to develop further, we go to the next page. This is a little bit about our financial targets. Uh, we have a very ambitious growth target, uh, at least 15% growth in net sales per year. And we're saying that about 5% should come from organic growth and the rest should come from M&A driven growth. And this is something that we have achieved almost all years in the past. We are targeting for an EBITDA margin of 12%. We are at 11.3% both in quarter one and quarter two. Uh, a net debt EBITDA gearing of three to four. That might look quite high, but it's a clear signal uh, that we want to continue to do acquisitions. It should also be said that we are really good at, uh, at converting our profits to cash. So if we should stop uh, to acquire, we would very soon com come down in gearing. So that's why we feel very confident that we can have this relatively high gearing and be part of, of the consolidation move in the European market. And we want to give a dividend of at least 30% of the tax, of the tax earnings. We continue. That was an introduction to Midzone. I would also like to take the opportunity to reflect on the second quarter and also give a short outlook for 2020. Uh, we had a very good second quarter. Uh, net sales grew by over 20% and EBITDA grew by almost 60%. It was a good quarter. Uh, to some extent, we had some positive COVID effects, but we also made a lot of progress in some of our major markets. Uh, and we're very happy about that. Uh, and of course, also very happy about the good margin progression that we're seeing from 8.4 to 11.3%. We move on. Uh, this is a summary of how revenue actually split up, uh, how we go from, from uh, quarter two last year to quarter two this year. And as you can see, uh, Exactly in line with our strategy, there is a big part that comes from our M&A activities, uh, over 100 million Swedish krona. But we're also growing our top, top 10 brand by a, by a healthy 50 million Swedish krona. Uh, we have some small negative effects from uh, a contract that we lost uh, and also for an exchange because the Swedish krona has strengthened. So when we translate our euro, euro sales into Swedish krona, they, they simply get lower. Uh, we also continue to grow the balance of the portfolio. It was up by 13 million Swedish krona. And, and that's a mix of smaller brands, but we also do some private label, uh, which grew very, at very healthy rates, uh, and some food service business, which was uh, very depressed during the quarter uh, due to the fact that schools and restaurants were were closed in, in big parts of Europe. Uh, but overall, a very good sales progression also in quarter two. We go to the next page. Um, let's talk a little bit about COVID-19. I would say that overall, the effects have been positive, uh, but it has been a little bit of a roller coaster. There have been a lots of ups and downs. Uh, at the start of COVID-19, uh, people hoarded products. We had very high sales, especially in, in, in March. Uh, then came a phase when many countries were in lockdown, uh, which meant that sales continued to be at quite high levels because people were working from home, they didn't go to restaurants, they didn't go to school. So more food was consumed in home and less out of home, which was positive overall for us. Uh, when country starts open up, we have seen some temporary dips, but we think that those are temporary and we think that long term uh, people are as interested or even more interested in, in organics and healthy foods as they have ever been. We go to the next page. Um, we also made good progress with our base business, uh, which has nothing to do with COVID-19 uh, at all. As I talked about earlier, one of the key strategies that we have is to move our products and brands uh, from the specialty stores to also be present in, in the grocery trade across Europe. And in the second quarter, we got some, some breakthroughs where we got listings uh, at some major Euro European customers. It's 
big chain shot in Europe, which you probably know the names of. And our brand for the grocery trade in France and Spain grew by a spectacular 84%. It should be admitted that it was from a pretty low base, but still a very impressive number. In Germany, uh, we started the rollout uh, with a major customer also, uh, one of the big retail chains in Germany. And uh, we had what we call the pipeline filling when we filled the, the warehouses of that retailer. And that made the David brand in Germany grow by a good 38% in the quarter. We continue. Um, when uh, COVID hit, the M&A market was uh, was uh, really, really slowing down. It was very hard to make any acquisitions because there was uncertainty on our side, but also on the seller side. And also for practical reasons, it was very difficult to visit companies, meeting with management, uh, going through uh, production plants. Uh, but in the second quarter to us then, we did one acquisition, uh, the Gainamax brand in, in mainly in Sweden, but also present in Finland, which is a strong brand in sports nutrition. It should be said that it's still a relatively small uh, acquisition for us, but this is something that we're very happy about still, and we took over on September 1. We continue. And this takes us to my last page, which is about the outlook for 2020. And of course, uh, it's very hard to make predictions. I've said that the COVID crisis has been a little bit of a roller coaster. Uh, it really has. And of course, there still is major uncertainty in the markets. Um, we think that what we will see is more of a normalization of demand and supply, uh, which means that still people will continue uh, to demand uh, organic and healthy foods because that's a strong general trend in society. So I think that the prospects are good for, uh, for brands and, and the product categories that we're in. Uh, we are very focused on the rollout in the grocery trade in Germany, France and Spain. Uh, we have made some good progress and got some first listings in the second quarter and we will continue the rollout in the second half here. Our effort to do Cost and efficiency savings will continue. And uh, we're very happy to say though that the M&A market starts to, to get back to normal. So we have started some, some discussions again. Uh, we don't know when we'll make acquisitions. Uh, and then we'll have to inform about those later, of course, when they happen. But we do see, uh, we do see good opportunities for acquisitions now again. That was my presentation. So I open up now for the Q&A session. Yes, thank you, Peter, for that. Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. Um, we have to get on with the next presentation, but we thank you a lot for, for coming and uh, thank you for your presentation. Then I hope that the presentation gave all the answers and I, I thank you so much also. Thank you. <laughs>